Once again, this is C. Wayne Yi from the Yi Real Estate Network. I, my special guest is Mr. Richard Advani of Supreme Lending. His company is specializing in uh, doing mainly investment loans for business investors all over the country, all 50 sticks, as a matter of fact. So welcome, Mr. Advani. And today's topic, uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, non-qualified loans. Uh, as I've been working with my real estate investors for the past, especially for the past few years, uh, some of my real estate investors, they are buying multiple properties in a market that we are promoting, mainly in the South and Southeast. And uh, they are, uh, through our mentoring and consulting, uh, a number of them are approaching the maximum 10 mortgage Fannie Mae lending guidelines for investors. So I've been asked a number of times now, and so uh, to to uh, by my investors, they're asking me uh, like what type of financing options are available once myself and my spouse have uh, approached a ten mortgage limit. So, Mr. Richard Avani, as I understand, although you know you uh, you does many investment loans, uh, your company has some very uh, interesting attractive loan options for people that uh, uh, that already maxed out on the 10 mortgages uh, buying investment properties all over the country through our help. And they are, in, in fact, uh, one, one more uh, caveat I wanna uh, run by you, uh, Richard. They, the misconception is once you max your 10 mortgages, you have to go into commercial investing. No, that's not true at all. That's a misconception. Many of our investors, they would, continue to buy uh, single family home, residential investing and duplexes. Uh, as a matter of fact, they have no intention of buying commercial properties five units and above. So they wanna, to, they wanna see uh, what type of lending, what are the interest rate, uh, what are the loans uh, associated with, uh, if once you max out with the Fannie Mae 10 loan limit guidelines. So what are the options, uh, Mr. Richard Avani? Uh, inquiring mind wants to know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And as you, as you mentioned, uh, there is life after 10 now. There wasn't for the longest time. And uh, they're, they're, the only options really were commercial lending alternatives, as Seawing mentioned. But that's changed for quite a while now. Now, a lot of you know, I worked uh, at Wells Fargo for about eight years, ran one of the top teams. Last year, we moved over to Supreme Lending. And, um, and being here, the first six or seven months, we really focused on getting the conventional business and our processes up to speed. And um, I knew that we offered some more non-traditional programs. And, you know, in my course, over the course of my career for, you know, the last, especially the last three or four years, uh, I would hear about some of these non-traditional programs. And Seawing and I would actually send some clients to people we heard that were offering them. But more often than not, it seemed like, you know, you throw 10 of them on the wall. A couple would stick. It wasn't a good client experience. So I was very skeptical about this program. Um, so yeah, six months into Supreme, about six months ago, um, I started looking into these programs a little deeper and I was very surprised in a good way uh, on what I saw. And, you know, fast forward to today, you know, we've closed probably 40 to 50 of those transactions. And you know, they're growing as a percentage of the loans we do. You know, they're probably up to 20 or 30% in just a short period of time because they are so attractive. Now, these non-QM loans are not Fannie and Freddie loans. However, um, they are 30-year fixed or even 40-year loans, uh, which I'll get into here in a moment. Uh, the pro loans are really based on the collateral itself. So there's no income documentation. It's not even stated on the application, believe it or not. Um, and uh, one of the beautiful things about these loans is that that 40 year loan option is a 40 year loan with a 10 year interest only. So the first 10 years are interest only, the remaining 30 years are fully amortized. And the beautiful thing is the rate is fixed the whole time. And you may have obviously heard us talk on different webinars about rent inflation and the fact that, you know, typically as property values go up, rents take a year to two years to catch up just because that's how long leases are, for example. And the beauty of this 10-year interest only is 
It allows you to wait for rents kind of to catch up to property values, keeps that payment a little lower, gives you that front end cash flow. And then 10 years later or before, whenever you want, you have the ability to obviously to start paying principal. And the rate is fixed the whole time, as I mentioned, which is you know crucial, obviously, to building wealth with real estate. Um, but you know we are seeing right now pretty much 100% uh, success rate. The program is not good for condos or townhomes, but single family homes, multi-units, it's a really good program. One thing to note is it does have a minimum loan amount of 100,000. So depending on which of Seawing's market you're looking at, uh, you may need to um, you know, uh, take that into account accordingly. Uh, also, you know, of course, the biggest thing I forgot to mention is there's no limit to how many finance properties you can have. So you can have 10 properties. We have one client we're doing uh, some loans for that has over 100 properties on credit. A lot of them bought prior to the last meltdown. And believe it or not, we're refining properties for him. So uh, the program is exceptional. I have some clients who are under 10, but they're self-employed and they may not qualify otherwise or they're retired. Um, or they're just like, hey, you no income documentation, sign me up. Because getting a conventional loan uh, does require, obviously, a good time commitment, especially if you have multiple businesses and a good you know, size real estate portfolio. Uh, that being said, though, typically, if we have a new client referred over to us, our number one goal is to see if you'll qualify for conventional. If you can then you know we present that option obviously and still give you the non-traditional option but you know as you can imagine the interest rate the terms the fees are going to be lower in a conventional loan versus these non-qm loans over 10 finance property loans but uh it's also open to foreign nationals as well so um if anyone sees this in another country definitely reach out to us as well because uh that this program does work with foreign nationals still a 30-year fixed rate and only 30 percent down okay let me let me uh, see uh, let me replay if i can understand what you're saying so let me give you a, a, a case study uh, of actual uh, clients several clients that i've been working with uh they are these investors are approaching 10 mortgages very very shortly uh, she's been financing uh, uh, single family residential investing loans and duplexes around anywhere from 250K to uh, $400,000. Uh, so, and she has very good credit, very high 700 particle score, uh, full doc, W2 salary, all that. Uh, she has the down payment available, at least 25% down payment. Uh, so, uh, so what are type, the type of loans uh, if this investor is going uh, to do on a non-qualified loan? If she want to buy another property beyond the 10 mortgage at this moment, and she want to buy, for example, a single family home residential property uh, somewhere in Raleigh, North Carolina, or, or Cape Coral, Florida for like 350 or 400K, and, and the property rents for like $2,400, $2,500, we're seeing that 4%, 5% cap rate. What type of... Uh, non-qualified investment loan could she get uh, based on her situation? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. So if she put 20% down, that would leave her with a loan of 320,000. Um, if she was in a conventional loan, to give you an idea, the principal and interest on that $320,000 loan would be probably about $1,670 a month. Um, now, if we went interest only with that same 320,000, um, that payment would drop as low as um, 1580, give or take. So, um, you know, you do see quite a significant difference on that. And bear, bear with me here. I'm um, what, what, bracing what is, it up. What is, what is the inter interest rate now? Say again. What's that? Sorry. What, what, what is the interest rate? The rate? Um, I, I obviously would need to price that up, but I'm assuming, you know, high fours at 20% down. Um, with the the conventional loan option. Right, okay. Bear with me, I'm pulling it up here, trying to get a calculation. Yeah. Non-Fannie Mae, uh, more than 10 loan limits. Okay, got it. Yep. So, if, yeah, uh, just, uh, I'm calculating off the top of my head uh, with 20% down payment on a uh, $375,000 no, no, no uh, on $375,000 investment property, single family home, 
renting for $2,400, even if it was at a high 4% interest rate on this non-qualified loan at a, did you say 20% down payment? No, the high 4% I was renting was the conventional loan option. Mm -hmm. These uh, non-QM interest only loans are in the high fives. High fives. So high fives, most likely for, for this case scenario, most likely they need to put more down payment, maybe 25 to 30% down payment. Don't you kind of agree? If you, just, if you look at the cash flow, part of the cash flow situation, uh, is that? Yeah, but you are going to have increased cash flow, obviously, because it's interest only as well over the conventional. Um, but you have the option, of course, to put more money down to get a lower interest rate or even to obviously pay some additional points uh, to drop that rate lower. Right. So, uh, so our, four, uh, I mean, our, our duplex, for example, around $550,000 duplex uh, in new construction, renting for like almost $4,000, both doors, $2,000 per door. So you look at the rental value ratio, uh, again, uh, non fannie Mae uh, loan, more than 10 mortgages, uh, what, what are the, what are the non-qualification uh, loan requirements to, to, to get a loan? beyond Fannie Mae 10 max. Yeah, I mean, the only thing really is that the property is at, at least cash flow break even. If the properties break even, uh, you can put 20% down and there's no income documentation or requirements. Generally, you do need to own a primary home to take advantage of the no income documentation. Uh, if the property is not cash flow break even, and what we look at purely is the payment versus the rent, right? 100% uh, of the rent versus the principal interest tax as an insurance payment. So it's not break even, then you have to put 25% down, but still no income documentation. You do need to have reserves, of course, of six months for that subject property transaction we're working on. But um, yeah, it's very, very straightforward and very easy to qualify for. Okay, Richard, uh, as we conclude on this topic, uh, you do not necessarily do commercial loans. That's, that's, that's not your niche. So uh, anything five unit or above, uh, you you don't uh, you're not involved in that product, am I correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Okay, I think uh, that pretty much conclude this non qualification loan for investors that already maxed out on a Fannie Mae ten loan limit for themselves and their spouse. For example, if they have a spouse, they can do another ten loan on a on a Fannie Mae lending guidelines. So, at the end of the day, uh, it's still a uh, makes sense. Uh, from my from a investment strategy for investors, if they have the capital, if they have the ambition, uh, if they want to purchase more ten properties, finance properties, and they max out on a Fannie Mae ten loan limit, what I what I hear you saying is based on this current interest rate environment, based on this current real estate market environment, for uh, for real estate investors out there, yes, they are still uh, uh, it still makes sense to continue to buy investment properties using non-qualified loans, giving the rates and uh, terms that you just mentioned. So they should, as long as the investors have identified some good properties, good markets with a combination of decent cash flow and appreciation markets uh, and so forth. Am I, am, I, am I right? Correct. Very good. All right, that pretty much concludes this topic, how investors can go beyond 10 max loans, continue to buy rental properties using favorable non-qualified lending guidelines. Thank you so much.